Hey, Mountain Fancy. Uh, I'm really glad you're not part of that elitist watch community. Like, I have this friend, and he's part of it. He really likes expensive watches. Like, I don't know, $3,000 or more? I told him he should watch your reviews. I said, hey, nothing fancy. Go watch one of his watch reviews. Uh, he said, who the hell is nothing fancy? Yeah, he had no idea who you are. He does not watch your show, nothing. Sorry. But he's part of that elitist community, and he's kind of a douche. So... I think it's all good. Keep cranking out the WRVs, not and love them. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that backhanded compliment. I accept it humbly. No, I'm not part of that community. They have no idea who I am. No, they watch um, other people. Usually TPA. I made the same mistake once upon a year in YouTube. Watching a watch review from an individual who will remain nameless. I don't want to promote him. And I quickly figured out, this guy's on the take. Every watch he gets is probably for free, and he's going to say something positive about it, just like a lot of gun reviews, a lot of knife reviews, a lot of multi-tool reviews, and pretty much every review. Social media is rife with third-party advertising. You think you're watching a review? You ain't. You're watching an advertisement. You've been duped. That's right. Sucker! Not here in TMP. Everything you see is genuine, according to my own aesthetic. Yeah, I'm an outsider. I have a certain aesthetic. Oh, another reason I quit watching those channels, too, because they kept reviewing the same ugly t style of watches. I'm like, God, those are ugly. Ugly. Like shiny dress watches over and over again. They act like they're all different and new. No, that's not what I review here. Uh, my price target, like I've always said, $300 or less. Most of the pieces like these are $100 or less. That's cheap, fellas. That's cheap. $100 watch is like cheap, cheap, cheap. Now, those links I put beneath the video, if you click on those, it gives me more opportunities to get these watches, not from the manufacturer for free, but I buy them. Or in this case, I cash in points at drop. So, I'll, you know, I'll accumulate a few points and I'll go, oh, Time to get another watch for a review. That's what I did with these two CCCP watches. That's right, it's a two for one WRV, high value. Posting first, of course, in TMP Patreon. Thank you to my donors, the reason I continue the show. You should be one. You just went out and spent 20 bucks on a lunch. I think you can be a TMP donor. Five bucks a month ain't gonna hurt that much. Appreciate you guys and gals who support me. Link below for that. Okay, now, getting on with the show with the WRV. My aesthetic is field watchy, dive watchy, military watchy, pilot watchy. Yeah, mostly. I mean, I do vary from that, but that's mostly what I like. This is a triple CP Aurora. I reviewed this uh, a while back. This is the beautiful blue version. Has a Seiko automatic movement. I think an NH35 in it. Blue face. This is hands modded by myself. I painted them white to be super stark and more awesome. This is a watch I could wear every day. I mean, seriously, when I'm wearing my Aurora, I'm just going, man, this is a great watch. 100 bucks. I got this at drop as well. And uh, so you guys went and bought your Aurora using those, and I accumulated some more points at drop, and I'm going to show you two more that I cashed in. Um, but I'm setting the stage for the brand CCCP with the almost perfect Aurora. The only thing I really said in that WRV that it has sharp angles on the case, and I was worried that it might not be super comfortable and wear. Here's the update on that. Where's my megaphone? It doesn't matter. I do not even notice them, and they look kind of awesome. There's your update. Leather strap, timing bezel, perfect hands. Great colorations it came in. It's got that red translucent back. Screw in case back. Look at the freaking leather strap, dudes. Tying leather, thick. It's just a great watch. Yeah, it's a watch I'm super sad to take off when, when it's done. It's like, ah, I really want to wear my Aurora. But I do, you know, watch reviews, so I have to swap it out. Watches are core content in TMP, and they have been for years. 
And by the way, on the table, I got the Super Marine Spitfire Mark 9 with Hispano Cannons and an ME-262. I've got Taco Bell on the table and 1 to 144 scale, and it makes me happy. Great decorations, great props for the show. Uh, two watches, also from Triple CP. Not too many competitive offerings because this video will go long enough. You probably already quit watching. That's sad, by the way. First one I'm going to show you. Okay, for the first one. So cool, so cool. It's going to be the Triple CP Cashalot. I think I'm saying that right. Cashalot CP. Zero, I'm sorry, 7027. This is the dash 05 coloration. Yeah, I picked this up at drop. If you're not familiar with drop, here's how it works. You can't be in a hurry for the piece. Okay, what happens is you click on my links and you request the drop. And when enough people do that, they activate it. And then they will contact the manufacturer direct, triple CP. They'll say, hey, we got an order for, let's say, 200 watches. Triple CP says, great. Um, and they'll activate the link. Or I shouldn't say order for 200 watches, but they have 200 requests. And then Drop will activate it and notify you via email, hey, this, this Drop is alive. Go choose your color or colors. And the Triple CP Cashalot came in some really cool colors. I really love this kind of diamond white version in blue. Look at that face on that. This is a Dash 05 version and they had some other great colors. We're going to start here at the face on the cash a lot. It says Triple CP 1980, three stars, oh four stars right there. Nice detail. Acrylic writing on the bottom, 100 meter water resistance. Just a cool face. It really is a clean face so it's not overly busy. It's tastefully done. You have a legible positive display date window in the three o'clock position. You have applied markings in the case. That means they're raised up and you have triangular 12, six and nine markings. Then stick markers thereabouts and you have kind of sadly, a, a small ding, a large chapter ring here. And I prefer it didn't have a chapter ring at all, but since it's a, this is a divey watch, Tyvee watch. Um, it seems like they feel obligated to put a freaking chapter ring in it. The good news is, is they didn't put a lot of garbage on the chapter ring. It's just minute graduations. Now you have a arrow, hours hand, and a stick, minutes hand. And you have a two-tone seconds hand, as you can see, moving around the case. Nothing fancy. Would you mod this watch? Perhaps, I think if the hands were painted navy blue, super dark navy blue, it would it'd pop even more against that uh, diamond white background. And I think the camera's doing a good job of picking that up. I wouldn't touch the seconds hand, it's perfect. It's got like a little arrow tip on it with a red pip. Very nice, I like it. The bezel's a complete win on the cachalot. It's a coin edge bezel, look at this. Really cool Soviet marking on the left side. Super cool. Great traction on this, uh, I believe, 120 click bezel. But since I'm not really a watch reviewer, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> you got 20 minute graduations up to here, and it's anodized blue. Really nice stylistic add on to the cachalot. Now, notice this is kind of a turtle homage. The Seiko Turtle kind of has the same uh, shape in the case. It's kind of a kettle shape, reversed kettle shape. I like it. So this is going to be a thicker watch. It's going to be 14 millimeters in thickness. Not too bad. I have thicker pieces for sure. 47 millimeters, not counting the crown. So that's kind of broad, albeit it does suffer slightly from the small face syndrome. And then we see an interesting attachment method for these very cool leather straps. No lugs. That's right. Looks great. Really does. Clean appearance. It's going to fit a wide variety of wrists since there's no lugs to hang over your smaller wrists. I think a six and a half inch wrist person could wear this cash a lot all day long. There's no lugs. Downside is you're stuck pretty much with a strap that it comes with unless you can find something that will fit it. 
and you can see the attachment method right here. Now on the upside, and it's a huge upside, uh, I really wouldn't want to change out the straps that these triple CPs come with. And like I said about the Aurora, I, you can see I've left this one on. They're fantastic. This one is not quite as thick as the Aurora strap. Look at this, a little bit thinner. The Aurora is a monster. I mean, that is a thick strap. Um, this one's thinner, wears great, looks fantastic. It's blue, frosted clasp, logo right here, double keepers, great strap. The only thing I would say bad about this is that you could not dive with it. I wouldn't. It's 100 meter water resistance. I don't think anyone is going to do that anyhow. But if you did, you'd ruin the strap. Also, sweat and hard use will wear the strap out. I didn't really research if I could get a replacement from Triple CP. I suspect you could. And if you buy this, you might want to entertain that notion. Should I just buy an extra strap since they are proprietary? Just a thought. Just a thought. Now, the blues are going to be different from the bezel to the leather because every time you anodize something, it just changes out. Uh, or it just turns out in a little different hue. Um, I love how it wears though. It's a big watch that wears compactly. It does have the small face syndrome, but in this coloration, the Dash 05, the white, look, you don't really notice it, do you? Because of the white chapter ring. Another reason why I like this variation. So that's the Cashelot 7027, and it has the, uh, I believe the NH35 movement in it. Moving right along in this two for one, triple CP WRV, hopefully you're having a good time. I am. I don't know if anyone's still watching, but I will pretend you are. <laughs> I will. Here comes a second one to consider. I also really like it. It is the triple CP model 7047, CP 7047. And the name is, <clears throat> good luck with that one, APKHIPOV. A Pikapov? Now, I'm sure someone knows how to pronounce this. Uh, I should have looked it up. Since I'm not really a watch reviewer, I don't have to do such things. I can wing it. <laughs> I want to call it the APK. Yeah, the 7047 APK. Uh, it's actually not a made-up name. It was a command staff member on a Russian nuclear submarine that prevented nuclear war. He was a dissenting vote to launch a nuclear weapon or more against the United States. That's the backstory on his name. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, APK. Pretty cool story. The watch is named after him, and we see the same triple CP aesthetic. Red translucent back window. You can see the Seiko rotor there. And I think the power reserve on these is about 40 hours. Uh, like you, I have more than just one watch, so does it really matter? You're probably swapping them out. If it was my only watch, I would be more concerned about it. Uh, but it's a high quality movement, it's hackable, really cool, and also the cash lot is hackable too. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Sometimes I forget. Yep, hackable. Screw and count, crown on this cash lot also. Uh, back to this one. I love the red translucent back on this. And it is also a 100 meter piece. So kind of a desk diver. Comes with a leather strap, just like most of the triple CPs do. I have no problem with that at all. Again, that is my aesthetic. I love when they blend the elements of a field watch and a dive watch together. I said that in the Aurora review. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's super cool. Uh, screw in case back. Should you ever need to modify it, like I do, 24 millimeter lugs on this one, guys. And the piece is, and by my measuring, 44 millimeters. There's the front on the APK, uh, 14 millimeters by a very short and abbreviated 49 millimeters with some uh, downturned lugs. So let's compare it against the cash a lot. Uh, about the same size overall case-wise. You know, when you consider the lugs, these are really short lugs though. So I think smaller wrist diameters could get away with this, no problem. Smooth finishing on this stainless steel case. Comparing it against the cachalot, just for fun. 
right there. 24 millimeter lug spacing on this one, guys. So you might want to invest in a couple 24 millimeter straps if you want to swap the straps out, which I do recommend. It's super fun. This is a NATO variety that it comes with. I think it's a great choice for this watch. It looks great. Look at this. Uh, thin. I wish it was just a little bit thicker to help stabilize this watch, which weighs, did I write a weight it down? I didn't. Oh, there it is, three ounces. If it was thicker leather, you know, just thick enough or thin enough, I should say, to uh, thread underneath that spring bar, it would be perfect. But as it is, it's just fine. Triple C logo here, four star. This one in navy blue, simple. Double keepers. I love leather NATO straps. I do use them on some other watches that I wear. Onto the face we go. 120 click bezel right here. Positive. Nice big knurling on this. So it's not a coin edge on the APK. The uh, picker pove, whatever the heck it is. But yeah, really nice bezel. No loom on this one. Simple markings, but you do have a timing bezel, which we all use frequently. Onto the hands. We have a stick minutes hand and a an arrow hours hand, just like we saw here in the Aurora and the Cachalot. I don't mind them. And then we have a sub dial for your seconds playing out right here with a very cool in this version red tiny hand. Again, we see that texturing in the dial, kind of Aviati, right? Aviate does this frequently. And who knows, they may be made in the same factory. Very well could be. Triple CP logo in red, four star, I really like that. Tying into the red, seconds hand. Apply 12 o'clock, nine o'clock, six o'clock in brushed finish. And then we have hours marking in military time here on the outer dial, simple markings. Really clean appearance, great looking watch. And get this. It comes in some fantastic colors. That's right. I was really torn between this one, the blue, and the red. Yeah, it came in red, and it was fantastic. Red strap, red face. I think the hands were about the same on this. Uh, also, green variations and some black variations. All of them are great. On the Ac Acropov? I'll call it Acropov. <laughs> on the Acropov 7047. Yeah, great watch. Really cool watch. A little bit smaller than this, although it does have lugs. The upside is you can swap out straps readily. And let's see, it does have a screw-in crown right here. Look at that side right there. And that's basically the watch. The 7047, a fantastic piece in its own right. Uh, this seems like a smaller watch to me than this one. So when I wear it, and let me drape it across my ugly wrist so you can get an idea what these pieces look like. And then maybe we'll end with a loom shot um, for grins. So this is my seven and a half inch wrist with the APK. Good looking watch, right? Look at that, that's manly. That is dripping with testosterone. Look at that, that's a good looking watch. Uh, maybe not on me, but on you it will be. Okay, and then here goes the cash a lot. 7027. Remember, this is a lugless watch. Look at that, dudes. Oh, that is very turtly in appearance. Uh, TD and I talked about this watch in an uh, off genre mini review. It's like a gun review or knife review. We talked about the cash lot. He loves this piece. Really good looking. Uh, better than the Aurora. Oh, man. I love the Aurora. I really do. I ain't making that up. It's Fantastic. Uh, all three of these watches are great. Uh, if you're into value pieces that have blend a dive aesthetic with a field aesthetic, I think you will too. Um, I find that AV8, Loom, um, maybe, uh, what's that other brand? Uh, not Spinnaker. Spinnaker's really up their game in the Loom department. But Ament, that's the one I was thinking. Ament, Loom, eh, they're okay. Uh, these usually aren't really high loom watches. This is not Super Luminova unless I missed it. And again, I, if I miss any of the details, I'll correct it in the description. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. These aren't like Seiko or Citizen Loom, but you can see you can read it, right? And it will last through the night. It will be rather dim, but they're $100, guys. 
That's all. That's all you're paying for these. So these are total value watches. If you need something that has better loom, spend more money, by the way. Oh, look at this cool Gundam decal, dude. Oh, I forgot to show you the guys this. I forgot that glowed in the dark, man. Yeah, it's not really a decal, it's a patch. Look at this, freaking cool. I forgot that glowed. I'm gonna use that like in every watch review I do. All right, time to wrap it up. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Triple CP is becoming a favorite micro brand of mine. Do they make watches I do not like? Oh yeah. Yeah, everybody makes something I don't like. Same for you, right? You don't like it all. Um, but the 7047, the 7027, uh, coming in various colorations are high value watches. They're automatics. So you, you don't have to mess around with changing batteries. They're durable, they're accurate. They look fantastic. They have timing bezels, which are functional. They have good handsets, which could be improved by nothing fancy modification, but that's a different story. Out of box, they're awesome. I highly recommend them, nothing fancy.